In VTSCADA, the development environment for building the user interface is known as the Idea Studio. Now that is where you're going to create the pages, draw your tags, and build everything that the operators are going to see when they use your application. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you everything there is to know about using the Idea Studio, leading to some fairly powerful techniques that can save you a ton of time in your development. But let's start with the basics. The example that I'm going to use for this series is based on the completed tutorial. It has all of the tags from that application, but none of the user interface. So what you're going to see is exactly what you would see if you start your own brand new application. The Idea Studio is opened by clicking this button at the top of this VTSCADA screen. After security has been enabled, that will be protected by the configuration security privilege. Clicking the button opens the studio. Now, you can move that around on the screen, you can make it bigger or smaller, and notice that at the bottom right of the screen, there's a scroll bar where you can adjust the size of what you see on the screen to make it smaller, or you can zoom in to see details. Use the scroll bars along the side in order to center what you want to see. Let's go back to 100%. So the main part of the screen is the page that you're developing. Below that is a list of all the currently open pages. Now at the moment, the only one is Overview. But even though this is a brand new application with nothing built in it yet, you get three sample pages with every brand new VTSCADA application. So I'm going to open one of those by clicking on the plus button. This gives me the ability to click Open. And here I can see all of the pages available to work on. The three dashboards are the samples that I mentioned. So I can open up one of those. Now, the dashboards are meant to give you an example of what you can build, but you can also copy anything that you want to out of the screen and reuse it within your own pages. At the bottom of the screen, I can see that I now have two open pages. And the current one that's highlighted is the dashboard. Now, after a while, you're going to find that this list is going to fill up with the pages that you're working on. So one thing that I recommend in all of my courses is that when you've finished working on a page and you're, you're sure that you're not going to come back to it for a few minutes at least, click on the X to close it here. Now, everything is going to be saved. You're not going to throw anything away by doing that. What it does do is keep that list of open pages uncluttered. So you don't waste a lot of time scrolling back and forth trying to find the page that you want to work on. Now, within the page, in every brand new application, you're going to see exactly what you see on the screen right now, which is just a series of hints to help you get started and find the tools. And I hope everyone notices this line right here. You can always press the F1 key to open the help screen and get context-sensitive help for any dialog box that's currently open. Having read everything that's here, the next thing you're going to want to do is to clean it off so that you can work with a, a nice, clean screen and start your own work. So the first thing you need to do now is select things to delete. And it's easy to do. You point and click, and that's going to select objects. Now, you could delete things one thing at a time, but it's much easier to select everything at once. So let me click on an empty part of the screen to remove that object from the selection set. And what I'm going to do is go up to my toolbar. Now, at the top of this uh, Idea Studio is a series of toolbars. You'll only see one at a time, but they stack on top of each other. So I have the Home toolbar open at the moment. Behind it is the Page Properties toolbar. And if I click to select an object, I will open up another toolbar specific for the object that is selected. All right, those are toolbars. Going back to the home toolbar, what I wanted to get was the select command so that I can find a quick way to select everything on the screen. Here's an option right here, select all. That allows me to pick up everything that's here. And all I have to do now is press the delete key on my keyboard and I've cleaned my screen. To draw, we turn to the palettes. 
there are three palettes built into the Idea Studio. Widgets, images, and shapes. For most of what you're going to do, it's going to be working with the widgets palette. These are tools that allow you to represent tag values or to create operator interface elements like buttons or switches or dials. I'm not going to spend too much time right now telling you about how to find things, but let's say you want to find a gauge. Pretty easy. There's the gauges. To draw something from a palette and put it onto a page, there's two things you can do. I can click and drag that over onto the screen and drop it anywhere that I want. Or I could find a widget. I'm going to choose one of these nice bars. Click once, and then when I go out on the screen, it's attached to the cursor, and I just simply click to drop it onto the screen, again, anywhere you want. Now you'll notice that, at the moment, I've got unlinked widgets here. This yellow indicator is telling me that currently nothing is linked. Very important to link every widget that you draw, so the way to do that is to select a widget, and then go up to the Link button, and this allows you to choose the tag that you want to be represented by that widget. That opened the Tag Browser, and I'm going to look for my analog status tags, all of them, and here I can choose, well, perhaps this is going to represent a tank level, choose the tag that I want, click the Select button, and now this widget is going to represent the values from the Tank 1 tank level. This one over here, still blinking with a yellow icon, telling me that that is not yet linked to any object. So even though you see the, the dial changing, that's simply a simulation run into the background, so that your widgets look realistic as you're putting them onto the screen. Now, you also have the ability to draw images, which can be anything you want, and you can import your own images. I'll devote one of my uh, other uh, videos to how to do that. And you can draw shapes. Both of these are used to put context on the screen so that the widgets you draw have some sort of a meaningful context for the operators. Three commands that don't show up within the palettes are text, line, and pipe. The reason they're not in a palette is that you draw them so often it's handy to have them within the toolbars, and you will find these three commands in the Home toolbar and in most of the formatting toolbars, simply to make them available to you pretty much whenever, wherever you want. But there's another way of approaching this whole concept of trying to make things easy to find, and that is to use the Quick Access toolbar at the top of the Idea Studio. Now, at the very, very top here, you see there's a series of little tiny buttons. The first one is Deploy Local Changes. Now, that's only going to be useful to you if you've turned off automatic deployment. The next one over is very handy. This is the Show Operator View button. Now, in the background, my currently open page is the Page Menu. After I've been working on this page, Overview, perhaps I want to see how this is going to look and how it's going to work for the operators. I can click the Show Operator View, that closes the Idea Studio, and it opens the current page within your VT SCADA screen so that you can see just how things are turning out. Okay, going back to the Idea Studio. You've got the ability to add frequently used tools to that Quick Link toolbar. So, a couple of tools that I find extremely helpful to uh, be able to get at quickly are, first off, the Tag Browser. I always wanted to open that, so what I can do is to find that one tool, right-click on it, and in the menu that opens, I can choose to add this tool to the toolbar. So now I have a link up here, so no matter which ribbon is currently open, I can always get at the, the one tool for the Tag Browser. A second thing I find useful is the Select menu. So I'm going to right-click on that one as well, and add it to my Quick Access toolbar, so I can always do selection. Okay? So I highly recommend that as you're working with the Idea Studio, 
that you add your frequent tools to that list. Now, what you saw earlier of dragging a widget onto the screen, linking it to a tag, that's what you're going to do for probably 50-80% of your time within the Idea Studio, and it really is as easy as what you've just seen. But just because things are very basic doesn't mean that only the basics are available to you. So in my next video in the series, I'm going to focus just on widgets and show you a lot of tips and tricks for laying out the screen just exactly the way you want it to be.